B sample. What do you think's gone on there, Adam? Right, well, actually, um, we spoke about this on the podcast on mm. Sunday. Oh, did you? And I went back and listened to the podcast um, that we did at the time when the news came out. Um, and I said the words, I think he's guilty of sin, um, which, it appe- which it appears, the, the, the story that's been put out there appears that he is not quite as guilty of sin, but might only be a little bit guilty. But, I, but the point being, I do remember at the time playing devil's advocate to the likes of Andy and Steve. And I, I do remember saying, I'm just playing devil's advocate. What we have to remember is, after the news came out, and Eddie did that, um, I think he was in America, and he did that interview with that fella, um, who, who really fucking went for him, the American um, YouTuber, I don't know who he is, but he really went Barber for him. Barbershop. Yeah, yeah. Is that his name? Yeah. Fair Barbershop. Fair. Shout out Barbershop. He attacked Eddie yeah, Earn, didn't he? that was fair play. Yeah. But what I said is that, um, that there was basically only one man speaking about it at the time, and that was Edward himself. And he was dug in. He was dug in, like, adamant that, you know, wait for the results, wait for the report. Is it, you know, he was clear to fight. He kept repeating, he was clear to fight. He was clear to fight. Yeah. There was a hearing. Wait for the report. He was really, really dug in. Um, and I, and at the time, I noticed that, and I said to the lad, we've got to give him benefit of the doubt here because he might actually be right. And he, and, and to this point so far, what what Pascal was saying back in July or whenever it was, has been proven right in terms of wait for the report, he was yeah. clear to fight. Both of which, at the moment, both of which at the moment are, are true. Now, in terms of the, the substance found in his body and all that, I'm no expert, but I was listening to your stuff with Terry, and yeah. Terry was um, pretty sure that um, the maximum amount in your body of this substance should be zero. Zero, yeah, that's on their website. Yeah, yeah. so as a result, as a result of that, something has obviously gone on. Something's gone on, I don't know what. They're I'm saying it got on. contaminated, aren't they? Well, I'm not clever enough to know to know what's gone on, but but it's, but uh, Varda, uh, sorry, UCAD can't can't be fit for purpose because no. Uh, and again, I'm re- I'm repeating a little bit what Terry says. I have listened to your stuff with Terry. Um, in terms of they're going after the little guys. Yeah, who, Liam who Cameron. The money to, yeah, they're going after the Liam Camerons of this world. But then as soon as they're faced with a big guy, Fury or White, then you know they're backing down because backing they're down. going to And yeah, Yui as well, Yui Fury as well. Yeah, it can't. It, you know, it can't. It can't go on like that. Um, but overall, with the drugs things, and I've said this for some time, I think that they're all at it. I think I basically just assume that everyone's on it, and only certain people get caught. Um, and I don't think it will be eradicated anytime soon. And I think that the reasons for that are um, disjointed um, governing bodies, obviously with the five, four, five, six different governing bodies for the belt, different bodies doing the testing. Um, you know, um, Varda, USADA, Clean Sport, blah blah yeah. blah. You know, it's, there's no there's no joined up approach. The promoters are running riot. The TV companies yeah. are running riot. There's no joined up approach. I think it's absolutely rife within boxing and other sports. But mm. I think I think it's rife within boxing. And one thing I have said on on the asylum is that um, I'm, I would make the um, horrible assumption um, that someone somewhere has already suffered life-changing injuries or possibly even lost their life due to boxing someone yeah. who was on drugs and we'll, and we'll just never know because they either weren't tested or whatever got away with it. I think that the, the, the harsh nature is that's probably already happened and that's a, that, is, that is horrendous. It is horrendous. Yeah, and do you know what the main thing is uh, with a common nom- denominator in all this is money, right? I know first hand, right, that Tyson and Yui's legal bill were just short of a million quid, right? Yeah. Just short of a million. So what's you carders? You sorry, you cads. Yeah. So and, and so you're already a million deep. If they're a million deep, you you cad have got to be a million as well, because all these lawyers they all charge same. And then you're going yeah. for a big massive case, and you've got Tyson Fury screaming, "Well, you, look at loss of earnings I've got here. I'm going to bankrupt you." And do you know what I think they've just said? Do you know what? Let's just let it go. And I think that Dillian White, I think he ground them down. And if you remember Eddie Hearn's interviews leading up to it, he was saying that you cad ain't got the money to tackle him, tackle big 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 sports stars and all that. They knew yeah. they could wear them out over a few. Few months now, and I think they forced their hands. Yeah, know, like, of course they have. Yeah, it would have been it would have been very embarrassing for UCAD to have a fighter under investigation and um, taking part in a licensed uh, yeah. official professional yeah, fight. Yeah, exactly. It would have been very embarrassing. 
Yeah, whereas Tyson, he didn't want to fight, did he? Well, because apparently that was at the time where he was... Depressed. Um, struggling, ...struggling with mental health, yeah. But Yui had two fights, didn't he, in that period before it all come out? If you remember, yeah. Yui's would have been the same as Dillian White's if it weren't for Thomas Hauser, wouldn't it? It'd have just been, yeah. it'd have just carried on as normal, wouldn't they? Yeah. So, but is Dillian White guilty? I think there's more unanswered questions, personally. Yeah, but and but as I've already said, you know, I'm not really, I'm not really clued up on it enough to to say yeah. whether there is or not. But more more than more than often, every virtually every um, every. T uh, High profile failed test leaves unanswered questions. Yeah. Whether that's Kid Galhad saying that his brother put his bloody stuff in his milkshake, whether that's Canelo saying he's, he's been eating the wrong meat, or Dillian White saying, you know, uh, what a contaminated Tyson Fury denying it, but then just only con coincidentally having two years off. I mean, we could go on and on. And How on. many have ever admitted it? Well, no one, and that's the, that's the problem. That is the pro well, except for that, that girl. Miller, that, was it. that girl yeah. won it. Cecilia, is it? No, not Brackhouse. What was that? Me, uh, oh, no, Misha Tate. Is it? I forget. One person's admitted it, and it's a girl, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, well, and uh, Jarrell Miller. Jarrell Miller. Oh well, he had no choice, didn't he? he set machine on fire. <laughs> and 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 do you know what? Eduardo tried to sign him, and then turned around and said, "I didn't want him anyway." He, he tried to sign him. And Bob yeah, Adam only signed it. You twenty years ago, Porker. Hey, he had more. He had Jarrell Miller had more in his system than you twenty years ago. I know. Ago. Yeah, yeah. My, my, I used to set machines on fire in jail twenty years ago. <laughs> they used to say we've never had a reading like that, Porky. <laughs> I once got done for about four different drugs in jail and I says, can you get two of them concurrent and just do me for two like you do at court? And they were laughing at the screws. <laughs> End up with 28 days extra. But but no, getting back to that, I think it's a cesspit now and I think they're going after little guys like Liam Cameron. It'll, it'll probably be somebody like... Uh, well, I'm not going to say a name, but it'll be a small guy that gets done next, won't it? And then they, they are sending the message out, aren't they? Yeah. The, well, we're like, not to like be Billy messed. Said, yeah. It's almost, it's almost like they don't want to find anyone, um, any, Who's, any yeah. profile star. They don't, they don't want to find them guilty, but it's, yeah, it's, it's all a mess. Um, so, away from that, Paul, yeah? I'm going to ask you um, yeah? what your kind of reflections are on the year, like best fight and that, best fight. Best there. fight at year, uh, you'd have to say Joshua Ruiz, wouldn't you, the first one. Well, I, uh, I like, that was good. Um, I really, really enjoyed um, Inoue against the Nier. Really, yeah, me yeah, I did as well. That's my second favourite one. Yeah, and the other one, uh, I forgot the name of it now, but it was uh, Frank Warren's son put a show on at your call recently. Yeah. I think that's the best value show, and I think Dean White had a fighter who won a belt on night, an English belt, but I forgot his name. The guy is it Shakan? Is it? Oh, that one at your one. call, I forget. Hardcore boxing fans are probably probably no. I'm, I'm a casual these days, but I'm a casual, yeah. There's but a, I, think, only, I think there's only three fights this year that I've watched live and then watched on replay the next day or the next week. That would them um, Joshua Ruiz won. Um, Inoue and Dene, I've watched that twice, and then also watched them um, Taylor and uh, what's his name. Who was uh, Taylor when he was at the O2 Arena? Who was who was that against? What was the fellow called? 